So I've spent the last couple of days living with my painting and uh, trying to decide how close to finished I am. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm, I'm quite close. I do want to um, better define this toe in particular. This toe is pretty good. This one here, the, the, the lines, the, the edges that define it kind of got, um, got washed out in uh, the work that I did on the perch in this area and in, in this area. Plus, I, I did do the, the, sh the adjustments to the shading on the, on the leg and the foot itself. And uh, so all of that together ended up making the making that toe and foot lack definition. So I'm going to see if I can adjust that a little bit. And another thing that I came to the conclusion about is I think I would like to... Um, I think I would like to lighten this area up here and maybe this area here too a little bit in the background and possibly warm it a little bit. Uh, the color temperature is pretty good, but, um, but I think it could stand to be a little bit lighter to create more of a, of a graded um, effect. Uh, dark, darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. It's already got quite a lot of that effect, but, um, but I, I think I'd like to enhance it a little bit. So before I start working on the on the toe, I'm going to wet this area of the background. I'm using my large one-stroke brush. And the clean water, cleaner side of the water. I'm not going to go too far up here, but I don't want to have too abrupt a, a change either. That should be fine. I'm going to float a little more water in here, especially close to the perch. I'm going to switch to my number seven round. Actually, I think I'll grab a larger round. Let's try my number 10. I'm zoomed in too far. You're not able to see what I'm doing. So I was working in this area here. This is, this is where I wet. So now I'm going to wet over in this area. And I am, I've switched brushes so that I have a little more control because this side of the perch is a little bit more um, complicated in terms of the, the shape of the edge plus the, this area that I'm painting up into right now between the perch and the bird's tail is a little narrow to be trying to use my big one inch wash brush with Cutting carefully around the feathers of the tail. I don't think I want to make this area much lighter, if lighter at all, because if I do, it's going to diminish the, the effectiveness of the, the white edges of the, of the feathers that I managed to, to preserve. But I'm wetting it so that I can, I, I keep my options open. I can lighten any of it, all of it, or none of it. This side here, I know I'm going to lighten a bit. And 
I think I'm not going to worry about the area in between the toes, um, in between the legs rather, and the and the the belly of the bird and the and the top of the perch. I'm going to leave that alone. So while I'm letting that um, reactivate the paint, I'm going to I'm going to wet my pool of my my cup of um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix, the browner one. And get a nice pool of relatively dark paint going. That should be good. So now I'm going to switch to quite a small brush. I think I will use my mm, let's try the this is my number one I believe. And I just want to carefully paint around the the claw here and the ball of the foot around so I have a better vantage to paint the, the top of the toe. The top of the toe is pretty good but it could use a little bit of definition too. There, that's better. wet the, the edges of the area that I just painted to blend the, the dark passages that I, I created into the area around them. There. Now I think I will lift a little bit of that. Rinsing my, I've switched over to my number four, I think this is. And I rinsed it out and squeezed it out to create a, a thirsty brush. And now I'm just using it to, to lift up the, a little bit of the, the dark pigment that I, that I spread out. Lifting a little too much of it. I think that'll be all right, but I'm gonna. I'm sort of dabbing paint back into these areas that are becoming a little thin with the tip of my brush, and then uh, I'm gonna leave it alone and let it dry. I think it will be okay. That's actually a little thin right there. I'm going to drop a little pigment in. It's maybe a little much. Let's try lifting a little bit of it. Kind of a push me pull you thing going on.
Too much, too much, too little. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. And this area. This area here is plenty wet. This area here is dried out a little bit. So I'm going to float a little more of my cleaner water in here and let the capillary action carry it out to the perimeter of the area that I wet. That's good. All right. So I'm going to grab a clean paper towel. And use it to lift over in, on this side. Not lifting a lot. I think it's all right though. Let's try lifting a little bit on this side. I need to be careful not to turn my paper towel into a, a stamp, lifting paint from one place and depositing it, depositing it in a different, especially a place where I've um, worked very hard to keep to preserve the white of the of the paper, like the, the edges of the of the tail feathers. So. Um, I think that's good value-wise. I think I will float a little bit of of a nice light warm color in there. What do I want to use? I could use yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is one of my favorites for this kind of thing. Um, Oriolan is actually quite good. Oriolan is a is a very um, transparent bright yellow. Yellow ochre is more. Yellow ochre is an earth color. I'm going to try a little bit of aureole and maybe a little more yellow than I really want, but um, I'll try it and see what it looks like. Kind of like it. Very subtle. I'm uh, using a really thin wash. I'm going to do just a little bit near the bottom on this side and carry it up about to the same level that I stopped on on the right side of the painting. Just south of the bird's tail. I think I like that. It's a little brighter yellow on this side than on this side, and I actually carried it a little farther um, up the painting on, on this side than on this side. So I think I'll, I will go back into this, the right side of the painting.
I want to make sure that in doing this I don't create a a cutout effect where um, this matches this but there's a gap in the middle that doesn't match either um, and I, th I think I'm safe right now because the, the the yellow wash ends right about here on both sides which is precisely where it be starts to become visible between the the legs and the and the top of the perch and the and the belly of the bird so I, I think that's a really good place to stop.